How glaciers form the Wisconsin landscape by us. So glaciers are big sheets of ice formed by compacted powdered snow layered miles high due to the frigid temperatures of the Cenozoic period. Can you not? Fine, I just like making booming voices. I'll stop interrupting. So tons upon tons of snow slams down to Wisconsin and frequently opening small gaps between earth and ice, creating a permafrost river where it eroded the rock, clay, and dirt and it created indentations once a vast plain right where you're sitting. So the Kill Moraine School District was named from the result of glaciers pressing down on an area that eventually formed uh, curved hills called moraines. And kettles are where pieces of the glacier were so heavy it made little craters and are now usually lakes and ponds. And they're called kettles because, I don't know, they used kettles a lot back then. And that's why the Kettle Moraine School District was named this. We're in that area. It also sounds better than Moraine and Kettle County. You're probably thinking, what's the Cenozoic age, Dr. Lloyd? Well, the Cenozoic period was the age of mammals. Consider the following. Megalania, Megaloceros, Megatherium. And the Flintstones. Man, I love that show. I'm kind of sad it went off air. Sorry, I'm getting off topic here. There's so many glacier formations. I just can't remember the rest. There are a few of them. Can you? No, I'm dry. Let's talk to Mr. J. What's up, huh? Yeah, man. Glaciers. I got you with the glaciers, bro. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Hey, right. no problem, yeah. What's up? It's your boy, Mr. J, cooking it up. And today, you already know we're in Wisconsin because we're talking about glaciers. Let's go. Okay guys, let's get into the video. So we're gonna be talking about glacial landforms. The first two, the kettle and the moraine, these are the ones that Gunnar and Noah just talked to you guys about. This is a drumlin. Drumlins are very common in Wisconsin and if you've ever been hiking or mountain biking at Laban Peak, you've seen a lot of drumlins there. And if you think about it, the drumlin kind of looks like a canoe that's been flipped over on its side. This is a tarn or a glacial lake. So this is the occurrence when a glacier moves through and it creates this concave shape right here. And then after it's receding out, it melts and the water from the melting of the glacier fills this area and it creates a glacial lake. This is an aerate. So an aerate is a separation between two valleys. You can see one valley over here, another valley on this side. And you can also see this is the tarn or the glacial lake right here. We talked about it in this slide right here. But <clears throat> you can see uh, that all the glacial landforms are really interconnected. This is a cirque. So this kind of like a bowl shape. And when a glacier moves through, it pushes up the land around it. So that's what you can see right here. These are really, really steep cliffs right here on the sides. Then the last one finally is a horn. So the horn is created when an area erodes on the sides right here. And after eroding, it leaves a peak right here. And that's what this is, this is the horn. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. So let's talk about glacier movement. Glaciers move due to the weight of the ice behind it, called basal flow. Periodically, glaciers move from the snow melting underneath it, causing the water to take away some chunks. But glaciers recede, so it's like a car on a hill in neutral, but it rolls down. Why would you put your car in, in neutral on a hill if you know it's not going to end well for you in the vehicle? It's just a simile. Oh, all right then. Okay then, so I think we're about out of time here, so I'm going to get to the final slide, and we're going to end the video with a question, all right? Bye! Bye!